Wave 5 of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is amazing and if you've played it you most likely agree. I mean have you seen the tracks? We got some bangers like Moonryu Highway, Daisy Cruiser, Koopa Cape and a brand new track Squeaky Clean Sprint which honestly rivals my favourite tour nitro Ninja Highway. Not only that we got not two but three brand new characters those being Petey Piranha, Wiggler and Kamek. Now, uh, because Wiggler's in the game, <laughs> we get to race as Wiggler on the Wild Wiggler. Okay, sure. Alright, enough of me praising Wave 5, it's time we get to the topic of the video. Predicting Wave 6. Like always, we'll be predicting the tracks that will be coming to the game, and like Wave 5, we'll also be predicting characters. Anyway, with that all said, let's get started with the Acorn Cup. The first track of the Acorn Cup is Tour Madrid Esplanade. Or Mobility. Or Motorway. Or something else. So if you couldn't tell, this track hasn't released in Tour yet. However, it is the mind under the name Mob MD, presumably standing for Madrid. So yeah, we know absolutely nothing about this track. Now ain't that fun, Dabby Dozy? The second track of the Acorn Cup is GCN DK Mountain. I know, I know, I know what you're all wondering. And to that I reply, well Vanilla Lake was also advertising Coconut Mall, but there's no way they're going to be adding that dumb, stupid, boring track to Wave 6 of the DLC. And not to mention, every single track in the Booster Course Pass is directly ported from Mario Kart Tour. So these little teasers and advertisements and tracks just don't mean anything. It's as simple as that, what can I say? The third track of the Acorn Cup is 3DS Rosalina's Ice World. I know what I've probably left you all thinking, why are you predicting this track instead of something like, I don't know, Airship Fortress? Oh yes, but I'm not predicting that by the way. Well, you'll see why later on in the video. But why am I predicting Rosalina's Ice World? I don't know, it's really just a feeling. However, I do have two reasons as to why I'm predicting it. The first is mainly for variety's sake. Like, that's all. <laughs> And the second is because it would be a bit weird if Wave 3 had like a Christmas or winter track or whatever and Wave 6 doesn't because let's be real, this wave's gonna release near the Christmas time and it would make perfect sense to add one. Maybe it's something Nintendo doesn't care about but me personally I think it would just make a lot of sense. But really me predicting this track is more of a gut feeling than anything. The final track of the Acorn Cup is Tour Piranha Plant Cove. This is a track everyone thought would be in Wave 5 because P.A. Piranha would be in Wave 5 as well, but turns out everyone was wrong because Nintendo decided to make zero sense. But you know what, it kinda does make sense why they saved it for Wave 6. This track is the only non-city track in tour to have multiple versions just like the city track so it'd be a bit redundant if Wave 5 had 4 tracks had multiple versions whereas Wave 6 only had 2. But then that begs the question, wouldn't it make more sense if this track was in the final cup instead of the last cup because it's the only non-city in tour to have multiple versions? Well, honestly, no. There's one more tour non-city nitro that we have to talk about later which I think fits better in the final cup than this one. Oh yeah, and that also begs the question, why didn't they just save Petey Piranha for Wave 6? God Nintendo, you're so stupid! The first track of the Spiny Cup is Tour Roma Vanti. Oh, guess what? I've never played this track, just like pretty much every other tour track. Isn't it just surprising? Anyway, about the track, not all of its variants have released in Tour, only two have so far at the time of recording. But, um, what do I think about the track? It looks cool. Yeah, there's like really not much I can say about the track since I haven't played it, but uh, I guess I could point out some things I like about it. Uh, let's see here, that one part where you drive inside the Coliseum looks cool, that, that looks pretty fun. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, th that part with the rocky wrenches looks quite fun I guess, um, yeah. 
Uh, the track looks pretty, like, I'm dead serious, I think this could be one of the most beautiful looking tracks in the Booster Course Pass. Yeah, I mean, there's really, like, not much I like about it. I mean, maybe when it's out, I'll actually enjoy it. And plus, the third variant's not even out, so who knows, that variant could be, like, an absolute banger. The second track of the Spiny Cup is Tour Piranha Plant Pipeline. This track is an on-city nitro that I think fits better as a spiny cup track more than Piranha Plant Cove. Now you may be thinking, what? How? This track only has one variant in tour whereas Piranha Plant Cove only has three. Now just hear me out for a sec. Notice how lots of parts of this track are like all cylinder shaped. What if in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe this course was like all anti-gravity and stuff? Like, just think about it, you could literally drive anywhere in like, the pipe parts and be okay. Has any other track done this before in Nate Deluxe? No, they haven't. This would be the only track to do so, and that's why I think it would be the perfect Spiny Cup track. The third track of the Spiny Cup is SNES Bowser Castle 3. This is a track that I think will get added over Airship Fortress. Now you may be like, a SNES track over a fan favourite? Really? Why? Have you seen the remake in tour? Look at this thing! This is like GBA levels of remakes! In fact, it's the only SNES track to receive a remake like this, and you're telling me they're gonna add Airship Fortress? Go away! Okay, sure, this track might not be a fan favourite right now, but if it comes to 8 Deluxe, I'm betting anything it's going to be a fan favourite, I know it. Another reason I think this track will get added over Airship Fortress is for variety's sake. Both of these tracks are Bowser related tracks, like yeah they're like really different from one another but think about it, two Bowser tracks in one wave? Yeah that just seems unlikely. Not to mention we already have two Piranha Plant themed tracks in this wave. That and two Bowser tracks all in one wave just seems like something Nintendo wouldn't do and it seems kinda underwhelming. So which Bowser track has to go? I'm sorry but it's gotta be Airship Fortress. Controversial? Yeah, but hey that's just what I think at the end of the day and if you disagree that's totally fine. The final track of the Spiny Cup is Wee Rainbow Road. I think the last track is pretty obvious. If you've seen the prefix data mine, you'll know that the last track is a Wii track. Pretty safe to say it's gonna be Wee Rainbow Road. Why would they not finish up the game with a Rainbow Road? One of, if not the most liked one at that. Wave 3 even had a Rainbow Road to finish off top row of the cup, so why would the Spiny Cup not do the same for the bottom row? You know, if someone can find an argument against this track coming, I'll be pretty darn surprised. Alright, so characters is kind of an interesting topic since there's only two left. I think it's safe to say that Diddy Kong is a lock-in, I mean, come on, it really wouldn't be Mario Kart without him. But then that leaves one more character slot left. Two characters that people have been talking about the most are Pauline and Funky Kong. I also think both of these characters are the most likely ones after Diddy Kong, but who do I think is more likely? Let's start talking about Funky Kong first. Other than Mario Kart Tour, Funky Kong has only made an appearance in one Mario Kart game, that being Mario Kart Wii. Despite this, many many people love him, they'd even go as far as saying that he's their favourite character. Because of this, maybe Nintendo would want to add him, but I don't know, two Kongs in one wave just seems kinda underwhelming, there's just no variety at all. But honestly, it really comes down to if they want to please fans or if they want to focus more on variety. But do you know what, we still have Pauline to talk about, so let's talk about her before jumping to any conclusions. Pauline has only made an appearance in one Mario Kart game, that being Mario Kart Tour. However, she has made a few appearances in some Mario spin-off games, being Mario Golf, Mario Tennis and Mario Strikers. In fact, she's even made an appearance in a mainline Mario game, being Super Mario Odyssey. Because of this, maybe Nintendo's been considering adding her to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. However, there's just one problem. She doesn't have a biker outfit. Now hold on, people have been theorising that this Oliver could be them working on her biker outfit. I mean, if you look at it, the shape of the model kinda does look like the biker outfits that Peach, Daisy and Rosalina normally wear. So, out of Funky Kong and Pauline, who do I think is gonna get added? Well, I'm sorry Funky fans, I'm gonna have to go with Pauline. 
And hey, if you disagree with what I've said, that's totally fine. And if you have any reasons as to why Funk Funk come, let me know. I'd honestly love to hear them. And with that, those are my predictions for Wave 6 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC. What are your predictions? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, with that all said, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.